boys and girls, welcome to the, the, final, the final round of the Nerd Life. Uh, with us today, I have myself, which is attractive very much so, and uh, also a man who hunts people like you for sport, Michael Magus. I mean, I can't help it. It is my, it's my duty in life to hunt and uh, purify the human race. It's in my genetic code. We are once again at Norch Life here for the Formula X 17 round of this championship. Uh, if you've not been watching this championship, if you have not been, number one, go back and do it. Number two, uh, basically we're racing the same track every time. Norch Life, the monster, the green hell, the, the graveyard of racers. And we've been changing the car each time to a new car and we're getting more and more powerful each time we're at our most powerful right now and uh people are probably gonna die that's, that's unlimited power looks like we got a small field here today max simmons out front from tobias Thiro. max simmons this or uh martin Edmonds. this man Rene erber i like Rene's car i like i like the orange 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 is always a good formula one car uh, Vic Vega, Enrique Hervas, James Butler, Mauricio Delgado, and Spash. Uh, I want to say it's Chris Bash. Am I wrong on that? Kick his ass, Bash. I'm looking Captain at the, I'm looking at the Captain. stand. Captain Bash, okay. Which I believe is Dutch. and it's. I believe that is El Capitan146 on the race app stand. Pronounced Kuptin. It's Dutch. Ah, Kuptin. Or perhaps Crouton. So yeah, we've only got nine qualifiers here. Doesn't mean that we only have nine cars. There might be someone who didn't post a lap time. That often happens when you race at Norch Life. And just say, well, you can see right there, it's a six-minute lap in a Formula One car. It's freaking long. Uh, and there's a lot of places that you could make some terrible, terrible mistakes and uh, and end up. Uh, oh, kind of like that. <laughs> dun dun. All right, here we go. Once again, Andrew D providing us with the overlay. All right, we have 11 Six cars. Minutes. We have a Anthony Willis and an individual by the name of David Bailey. Track. So here we go. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Somebody oh, God. Already, already spinning off. That's Captain Bash. And we head down to the first corner here into the, uh, name. Into the arena. Leading the way is the GoPro car of Max Simmons. A lot of mess in the background. Three wide. Uh, whoever's in the black car there. Either it's Martin Edmonds or Vic Vega. It is Vic Vega. Okay, Vic Vega up in the second place. That's the only problem with, like, the changing cars every week is I have to relearn everyone's livery because I have no references for their livery. <laughs> different, different one every week. And, uh, oh, Lord. Nah. Vic Vegas spinning off, and well, there goes second place. Martin Edmonds, Tobias Thero, Rene Armour, and this man, James Butler, rounding off your top five. Relatively short race here, just 30 minutes. We've got two races today, though. Race two will have a reverse grid. So they are fighting not only for positions here. Oh, no! Butler in the wall! We have seen three cars go in the wall already. Enri hey, Enrique Hervas. I like that livery. Catchy. Sorry, what did you say about a perverse grid? Reverse grid, not perverse. Oh, they don't make them, like, line up on the on the start line in the big old dick and balls configuration? I mean, we could probably... We, we could do that in ACC. <laughs> But uh, we do not have that option in uh, in race room. This is a uh, standing start. That'd be even better. Make them stand in the pits and then run to their cars. True. It's free for all, baby. Old school Le Mans with the uh, run to the car. Yeah. Enrique Hervas pulling up ground on Anthony Willis really quickly. A couple people have gone with the soft tires. Most of the field have gone with the mediums. Uh, Mauricio Delgado and Martin Edmonds do not have a tire selection next to their name, which is interesting. Not sure what's up with that. Tobias Thiro putting the pressure on Martin Edmonds. Battle for second place. I like that shell livery, too. Everyone's got pretty cool liveries today. I like the Castro one that Martin sported. It's a 
Good stuff, good stuff, guys. I like the uh, orange and purple one. Mm -hmm. That's Rene Ermer. Monsieur Ermier. Oh, Martin off the track. Again? And overtaken. Oh, he didn't give it up. But uh, Tobias Thirol into second place. Uh, championship standings wise. Is there anything that's really going on? Okay, no, no, no. It's up for grabs. It's up for grabs. Tobias Thirol, uh, Max Simmons, Martin Edmonds, Enrique Hervas, they're all in the fight. So it's a four way fight for the title, which means we got a lot of interesting stuff here to play with. Well, they had another ship get stuck in the Suez Canal. Yeah. They got it out in a couple hours, though. <laughs> yeah, you think they'd be getting good at that by now? Got some practice. Get some tractors. David Bailey moving into the top 10, overtaking Captain Bash. And then Captain Bash gets back past him, so I suspect Bailey may have gone to the wall because <laughs> he's dropping like a stone. I wonder if Captain Bash is related to Baby Bash. Mm, possibly. For some reason or other, his songs popped into my head out of nowhere the other day. Oh! Preemptively. Uh, preemptively setting up the the, uh, the ink. Possibly. I accused Javier of being Frankie J. He did not respond. So, I mean, that's confirmed now. I mean, not big enough. Not, not, not big sexual enough. <laughs> Ah, uh, big sexual. Oh! Martin got out of there very rough out of the carousel, and Rene Armour picking up third position. It does feel like if you just don't fuck up, you're probably going to have a decent result here. <laughs> I mean, even if you fuck up five or six times, you're probably still do okay. <laughs> as long as the wheels stay on, you're probably going to be all right. As long as the car stays in one piece, probably. I mean, you can lose some pieces. It's not the wheels. Well, the thing that makes the wheels go boom, boom. Mm, you mean the engine? Yeah, sure. But that's when you're going to just, like, narrow it down like that. And just <laughs> confine it within your own uh, small view of the universe. Yep. Fair enough. My people are known for our narrow view of the universe, Anthony Willis! Into the wall. Wilbur. Looks like the car is still intact. Uh, that, Anthony, that's the wall again. And oh, somebody was not intact there. Someone's dropping through the order with a missing nose cone. They don't really need that. Not sure who that was. It was a yellow car. Nose cones are optional. It's a weight savings now. No, no, nose cones are optional, but they do, they do, they do, they do something very important for the car. <laughs> these cars are incredibly aerodynamically dependent. You really don't want to be breaking these up. Big Vega catching up to uh, Mauricio Delgado. Mauricio said a, uh, we haven't said his name much, and that's probably a good thing. I like his car. I like the black and uh, light blue combo. Very nice. Okay, Hervas running in eighth place. He might be the one that has no nose cone, because I believe that is the livery um, that we saw in the wall. All things are possible through nose cone. My brother in Nozco, it is possible that we can still win. <laughs> <laughs> Pit stops for uh, Butler and Vega. So they have enough damage that they are going to actually take the time to fix the car. Well, you got more than enough time. Huh? One lap is 93 years. Captain Bash, running in eighth place. 
Is it true that this track is so long no one's actually ever completed a single lap? Well, that's we've seen a single lap complete, complete a number of times. That's just anything. <laughs> different cars in different parts of the track, and they just slice it together. There is Vic Vega getting his car fixed up. And rejoins the uh, festivities in ninth place. Martin Edmonds on board with the tire murderer himself. So who's won races in this series so far? Tobias Theorolf has got four wins to his name, but had a very bad result in the second race in the F3, uh, or in the uh, Formula USA cars. And that is the only reason he has not swooped up this title. Uh, Max Simmons has not won any races, which is stunning. But he is out in front yeah, right now. Weird. And the other winners have been Henrik Andreasen, who's not here today, and Vic Vega. David Bailey going off the track there. You can see he is hauling around. No front wing and no nose cap. Is it true that Max Simmons is still only a uh, lead, lead based driver? Uh, no. It's Car rated Car at Car least bronze. <laughs> uh, platinum. Platinum, I don't think he's, he's got that. that. He's got that platinum chain, yo. I don't know about that. He's got that platinum rating. I do believe he's the only driver in this race to have a platinum rating. Martin might have a platinum. Martin's kind of like right on the edge of platinum. And, gold. and I mean, if Tobias Theorolf raced in some rated ESR races, he'd be platinum for, for show, yo. Very talented driver. Anthony Willis, an up-and-comer in the ESR ranks. He did uh, some excellent runs in the 3D speed se season this season. Probably will be his final uh, final time he gets, gets to enter into one of our series as a bronze driver. He's going to silver. Which means that he's good enough to race professionally. Technically, yes. Uh, in real life, the deal is, is that you are considered a professional driver if you have a silver or greater ranking. Welcome to ESR, we uh, generate nothing but pros. So basically in GT racing, which is where the whole... Uh, 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 a little sideways. Kind of saved it. Kind of saved Kept it out of the wall. <laughs> and a good rejoin, letting her bus by without uh, hitting it. Um, anyways, what do I say? We was almost got the, the way that the ranking system works in real life is that if you are a uh, platinum or a uh, gold driver and you partner with a silver driver, a gold driver, or a platinum driver, you are what is called a pro entry. If you are platinum, gold, or silver, and you partner with a bronze driver, you are a pro-am entry. And if you are a silver driver who partners with another silver driver, you are a silver entry. Creative naming, I know. And if you are a bronze driver and you partner with another bronze driver, you are an amateur entry. But if you can't sing Black Betty by Ram Jam, you get downgraded. And uh, a lot of the amateur drivers tend to be older individuals who, at one point, were probably better drivers than they are now. They slow down over time. Uh, a good example of that is uh, Steve Earle. He used to be a pretty good driver. Now he's like 75 years old, and they're always a little bit worried that he's even going to be able to get in the car. But he's still a heck of a singer. Might be. Herboss. I do remember the story of Steve Earle when he was uh, partnered with uh, Claudio Van Damme in the GT War uh, Euro Series. And after race one, they because they were doing two races, because it's a sprint cup, and you have to do each driver has to do at least 20 minutes of the race to walk to, to, to have the car's result count. As Herboss is catching up despite the lack of a nose cone there, and is trying to get past Mauricio Delgado. Um, and Earl was feeling so bad after the first race, so very bad, that they didn't know if he was going to be able to get in the car. Like, he was vomiting in the garage. Nice. As, uh, Delgado goes off there and loses the spot. Um, and so they sent Van Damme out there, and just, they're just like, so you're going to stay out there for 40 minutes and give, give Steve as long as possible <laughs> to, uh, to get in the car. <laughs> and in the end, it didn't work. 
Van Damme just eventually came in the pits and, and was like, well, you can't get in the car, so we're, we're done. <laughs> so Steve Earle was forced to sit in the pits at the same top of her head. There is also a ranking in real life that we do not use that is called the Tin Cup. And that is for teams that have drivers that are like both over 60 years old. And are big Kevin Costner fans. Mm. We do not use that in ESR because we we, 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 do, we honestly don't really have a way of, 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 uh, of verifying the ages we are providing. So. Also, I think that the lack of the well, sim racing is still a physical activity. Uh, believe me, my knee will let you that know, know that if, if <laughs> I do if I do a two hour stint, it's not happy. It's not happy. Um, it's not a physical stint in the same way that real race car driving is. <laughs> Vega running in eighth place. He was one of the two people who hit it. Oh, I like that livery, Mauricio. The monster livery looks real good. Yeah, I like the uh, the blue, the, the the green and black is uh, it's been done. You're not typo Come on. Yeah, I do. I do actually like. Yeah, the blue looks a little bit better. Tobias Thirol, six and a half seconds behind Max Simmons, but I think. I think as far as the championship is concerned, he's kind of got the, all the cards in his own hand. He just kind of has to put up two decent results here today, and, uh, and he's fine. He's quite a ways ahead of Max, but there is drop scores in this one, and Max did not do well at the first round in the Formula 3 cards. He picked up a 13th and a 3rd, so like he's dropping a really low score if he has a good result today. And uh, Tobias's lead will probably shrink considerably, but I think, I think really, like I said, it's it's just Tobias has just got to you know pick up I think like top fives. And he's, he's got this. Max Simmons doing his best to try to add to his expanding hardware case of trophies. 3D Speed Champion this season. I believe his first 3D Speed title. It was a bit of a flat season. A lot of the, a lot of the legends of the series were not there. Andrew Gordon, the reigning champion, is gone. No Matt Hicks. And uh, we got uh, David Bailey and James Butler. Well, I mean, it is summer, and they're probably, uh, you know, had to go to summer school because they did poorly in their uh, schooling this <laughs> year. I mean, it is definitely a possibility that a lot of our problems were you know, summer series. We're we're in we're in the like sort of post pandemic world a little bit here and people probably wanted to go do stuff. So That's probably, possible. Probably, probably hurt the grade a little bit. But hey, it allowed me to get a podium. So, you know. I am no <laughs> longer the Nico Hulkenberg of the three D speed series. I'm just the Nick Heidfeld now. It's an upgrade. Mm -hmm. I always thought of you more as a uh, Mika Hackman. Oh, definitely not. No, no, definitely He's not. He's drunk all the time. Oh, that's Kimi Raikkonen, sir. Possibly on my... They're, they're all the same. Come on. Nah, Hakkinen, Hakkinen never... Hakkinen never had the irreverence of Kimi Raikkonen. <laughs> Hakkinen, Raikkonen, back and forth and in. Somebody on Twitter was trying to claim that Charles Leclerc was the new Mika Hackett, and everyone's just like, you realize Hackett won two titles, right? Like, that's, that's not a good <laughs> comparison. If you Mika want to Hackett win, in, you get a few. Mika Hackett, in, the only guy that Michael Schumacher ever worried about in his entire F1 career, per Michael Schumacher. So, you know. Well done. Whether, whether there's a great deal of truth in that, I don't know, but that is, that is his statement. Hackenden was the only driver. Um, oh wait, I think he—I think he said Alonso. I think it was Hackenden and Alonso. They actually legitimately. Were. Rene Armour running in third position. He's had an interesting one. I think uh, honestly, if it wasn't for a DNF in the uh, Formula Ninety cars in the second round and then not showing up for the uh, the Formula USA cars, the Indy cars, he probably would be a championship contender. And James Butler 
sans a nose cone because he was second place in both of the runs in the F3 cars. Speaking of armor. I just think it's unbelievable uh, what James is able to accomplish with only one arm. Very yeah, well his done. arm is his arm is messed up. So yeah, uh, and, uh, uh, wrist it right off. He's got only wrist one arm now. That's the narrative I'm pushing: is that his arm has got gangrene, and uh, <laughs> it's either that or God. I can relate because if I, I'm I'm going to be doing an enduro race this weekend, and my shoulder's all messed up, so I'm, I I am not going to be happy. Do not do not ask me for anything administrative on this weekend because I will probably just snap at you and yell really loudly. Well, sugar dog biscuits. Although I will be, I will be running the uh, the oh, the uh, Costa Rica death matches and watching the UFC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I specific. I specifically uh, demanded that I not have to do the uh, the uh, stints when the race is on, which is fine because actually everyone wanted to do the or when the uh, when the fights are on because uh, everyone wanted to do the Vic yeah. Almost in the wall. V V V V V V V. Um, my teammates all wanted to do the uh, the the stance when the fights were happening anyway, so it worked out. We are we are doing tomorrow do nine lot. hours of Paul Ricard. Oh god. I'm gonna be seeing blue all day, all day long. And they're making me drive the Ferrari 488 Evo, which I'm not super happy about. I go on. Yeah, man. I mean, at least let Mike drive the, the Porsche career. Oh, no, 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 no. I'd be less happy. What? I would be less happy. It's just no pleasing some people. Porsche is my least favorite car to drive. When did that happen? That's not possible. That's always been the case. <laughs> not even close. You it's always, me, always you my... absolutely hate Audi's. My, la my least favorite car in ACC has always been the Porsche. There are cars that I'm worse in, but the Porsche is the one I enjoy the least. There are cars that are, like, just uncompetitive. Like, I love driving the Jaguar, but, like, we ain't winning if we're driving the Jaguar. The <laughs> Jaguar. So, uh, shout out to my boys. Eric and uh, Noel, who will be racing with me. Three man dance. And, uh, we and I'm, I'm the youngest member of the team. <laughs> In fact, Byron, to give you, give you an idea of how old my teammates are, if we replaced you with me, you would be the, uh, would be the youngest member of the team. <laughs> All right. So you're very experienced. Mm, we, we do have experience. I think gonna be your team name is the uh, Jimi Hendrix Experience. No, no, we always uh, we always race under the name Silver Bullets. Do you listen to a lot of Bob Seger? Good, good dude. Uh, I th I think it literally has to do with some with the sponsor we carry. Um, something in Australia. Coors. I, I have no idea. No, it's not. It's, it's Coors now. I would, I would, I would revolt, and leave the team if we had core sponsorship. <laughs> Be like, nope, sorry, done. <laughs> Don't care if they pay us, done. Our livery is very silver, and uh, a little bit of gray. Actually, it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. You wouldn't think a silver and gray livery would actually do anything, but uh, it's, it's not bad. I just wish it wasn't a Ferrari. <laughs> I don't. I really don't know why we picked the Ferrari. It's not exactly a favorite car in ACC. I, I don't know who likes it. But, uh, uh, the, two car the two car team is running the Ferrari four eight eight for both of us. Michael would much more prefer to be driving the Boxster. Mm. No. <laughs> What? James Butler in the pits again, along with Anthony Willis. Fix their cars up. Try and get a good lap, last lap of the race. Uh, or the last two laps, I think. 
it's secure. Once they're, that's the problem is when, when they're on the track, you get to see how many laps they've done, which is helpful. I know that the leader is on lap four, but I don't know where everyone else is. Um, but you can see actually the lap count is going up there, 3.7, 3.71. I actually really like that from uh, from Andrew's overlay. So thank you. I do think it's a little bit crowded sometimes. There are a lot of things here that I still don't really know what they do, but uh, it does a good job. On board with Max Simmons, giving you a idea of how terrifying this track is. No close battles really going on. The closest fight is actually the battle for the lead, which is down to uh, 2.6 seconds, two and a half second difference. So Theorolf has been um, has been chasing down Simmons now. Whether that's because Simmons is just kind of on cruise control, just kind of you know nursing the car home, I don't know. Could be Theorolf has really found his pace. Perhaps he's also found the cocaine. So apologies if we're not really calling the race, so to speak. It's because it's kind of spread out right now. So we're, we're going into deep. Oh, uh, James Butler went in the pits and didn't replace his front wing. That's an interesting choice. Or, or conspiracy theory, he broke it off again. Exiting the pit. Possibly. That'd be funny. There are some pit exits in... in, in, in on certain tracks, not not this one, but on uh, certain other tracks, Laguna Seca comes to mind, that are actually really, really treacherous pit exits. There's there's historically been a lot of accidents on uh, exiting the pits uh, on certain tracks. Rene Ermer starts his, I believe, final lap. Not sure if this is a five lap hard cap or if it's a five lap, five lap plus one lap situation. I'm not, I'm not sure which it is. I believe Final if lap. you do not complete at least five laps, you get thrown to the alligators. It's possible. Martin Edmonds has been in the pit lane. Interesting. He was, uh, he was pretty high up there. So interesting that he would pick. By the way, Captain Bash up into fifth place. You the man, sir. You the man. Especially because he went head first right off the bat. He did. I know. That's what I'm saying. A fantastic race. Although now he's in the pit lane, so I hope that means he is. I hope that means he's not done, because <laughs> uh, we, we we just we just we just complimented him. Mauricio right. Delgado, always a little bit of our rooting interest, Mr. Delgado. One a cool ass livery. Two. Super nice dude. Super enthusiastic. He's had some moments of really solid performance. Uh, he was really strong at the first race in the Formula 3s. And actually not too bad in the, uh, the Indy cars. But uh, did not show well in the Formula 90s. And uh, today also struggling a little bit. So like as the horsepower has gone up, his results have... Uh, kind of gone down. Tobias Thierolf can now see Max Simmons just ahead of him. A little over two seconds up the road. Might still have a showdown. He's got about a half, about two-thirds of a lap, actually, to get this done. And uh, still has the prime overtaking opportunity. Big Vig in the pits. Victor Vega in the pits of Romeo. On the... I don't even know how this camera would function. <laughs> We're on the real rear wheel of James Bond. He's uh, holding the camera while driving, all done with one arm. One arm bandage, James Bond. 
or RPGs, but I'm trying to figure out how many different narratives I can push at once. <laughs> They roll second place. Got the fastest lap of the race. Six minutes point uh six minute point three nine one. Can he get it to some three minutes? Definitely not. But he is closing on Max Simmons. It's at an even two seconds right now. Less than two seconds. Running out of time, but he might make this close. Doesn't really have to. Again, he's kind of got his destiny in his own control. Just kind of needs kind of just needs decent results. So shout out to Martin Edmonds. You've got your fighter bio up on the Discord. If you can check it out when you're uh, when you're watching this. In fact, I can confirm he has already checked it out. Oh, he did. Yep. There's a little uh, uh, little emoticon. Ah. Appreciate it, because I I had to like beat him over the head to be like, so you gonna take this strike force offer or not? <laughs> <laughs> He did. So he will be fighting in Strike Force in his next fight in the uh, in the simulated combat. So. Very nice. He'll be fighting simulations. He'll be probably fighting someone fairly decent, and it'll be interesting to see how it works out because his fighter is just kind of like all of his all of his fights have just been like I'm stronger than you and I'm bigger than you, and you're going to deal with it. <laughs> You don't know what we're talking about when we talk about simulated combat. Uh, PM me on the Discord if you are if this intrigues you. This stimulates you. You too can you be too. A simulated combat. You too can be an MMA fighter in Simland. You can challenge me for the open weight title. There are no rules. Okay. Just fight. Gap is down to seven tenths of a second. Max Simmons, if 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 indeed Max Simmons is just kind of coasting, he's letting this get real close here at the end. <laughs> Now, if I, I think, unfortunately, if he doesn't get him by the end of this straightaway, though, I, I, there's not really much of an overtake when you re-enter the arena that really comes into play. So time is running out. Don't think Theorolf will get him, but if he had one more lap, he probably would. Now, I'm looking at the best lap difference between the two, and it's like two, it's over two seconds. So I think it was really just Theorolf started really kicking into high gear there. But Max Simmons finally is a winner around Norch Life. He'll be joined on the podium by Tobias Thirol. And I don't want to jinx it. Probably Rene Armour. <laughs> <laughs> probably. There is no one close to him. He just needs to stay out of the wall. <laughs> okay. I think I can call now. He's He is going to be third. <laughs> Third on your program, but number one on your hearts. Indeed. Uh, Captain Bash still in the pits. I think he might be out of the race. That's unfortunate. Which means he has uh, checkered start from the pits. Checkered flag has been shown to James Butler. Now, interestingly enough, James Butler is listed as a DNF on the race app page. Huh? But a finisher here. I don't... Uh... Perhaps you have uh, spoiled the second race. I've actually put a piece of paper that hides. <laughs> and it's on my small ass monitor, so it's, it's not hard. Uh, what's the deal here? Why is. Oh. Why is Butler listed as a DNF? Did not facilitate. Uh, so here's, a, so here's an interesting thing. Um, so James Butler is listed in 10th place on race app, which is wrong because first race. And 8th place, where I, where we see Butler, is a guest account. Huh. So I'm wondering if something happened. He logged in with the wrong Steam profile, perhaps. Uh, maybe. This is very, very bizarre. I'm trying to think of who... I'm trying to. I'm just trying to count the names and see who's, uh, you know, who's missing. Who might who who might all otherwise be that guest? Because the the numbers do line up. 
That might be Bailey. Might be Bailey. I don't know. Something weird going on there. Martin, you may wanna you may wanna check that out. Because something, something, something fishy here. Because he's 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 get, been given the checkered flag according to our uh, according to this video here. And uh, has been listed as a DNF on reset. Possible. Also you compared Martin Edmonds fighter to Katastam, which is kinda hilarious. I mean, it kind of the same. Like I I couldn't really find anyone else who was like kinda good, who like just kinda knocks people out. Sam Could Alvey. It, uh he, yeah, but he's not Sam Alvey and like <laughs> Well no no, I mean even like Sam Alvey when Sam Alvey was winning fights. Like yeah. he's, he's just not Sam Alvey. Simmons your winner. Okay, so Butler is listed as a DNF. Interesting. I'm not, not, not sure what happened there. Um, Simmons from Theorolf, Ermer, Hervas, Edmonds, Delgado, Vic Vega. Uh, down a lap, but still finishing David Bailey and Anthony Willis. So they will score. With the with the scratch results in play, I can't I can't figure out what the championship permutations are. I'm assuming heading into this final race that Thiro is in front, uh, and mathematically speaking, Simmons and Edmonds and Hervas were alive coming into the race. Uh, I don't know what the deal is now. So off we go. Max Simmons on board as he slashes through traffic. Seventh place briefly on the inside. Oh, spun car that is Mauricio Delgado. No, not Mauricio. It looks like Mauricio recovered really, really well, actually. He's still in front of uh, Simmons. So at the front, Anthony Willis leads the way from Rene Ermer and Vic Vega, the two Danish drivers. Martin Edmonds is in fourth. It's a really, really good start by Ermer, actually, because uh, reverse grid would have put him. Oh, and he spins around. I shouldn't say nice things about him. <laughs> James Butler get it, or uh, not James Butler shoving Max Simmons a little bit wide there. That's fine. Get your elbows out. Get your so he's left is his elbow. <laughs> and he's on the attack against uh, Vic Vega. And that is for third place at the moment. Although early days yet, this race is uh, this race is probably going to look notably different when we get to the check flag than what it does right now. Willis leads the way from Edmonds. Ah, oh, Butler! Spins out. Probably will rejoin at the back, or nah, probably will rejoin in front of Armour. Max Simmons up into fourth place after winning race one. It's Big Vega in front of him, Martin Edmonds in front of him, and then Anthony Willis. Oh, Byron, I've started designing a, uh, a ship in Fleet Command uh, called the Lewis Class, as Byron, or as uh, Max makes the move there on Vic Vega. I think Tobias Theorolf came through with him as well. So they're back at it for round two. And uh, basically all it's going to be is basically a gun with engines. That's, that's the plan. <laughs> it's going to be the biggest Mac cannon I've ever constructed. And it's got engines, and it's going to be able to probably destroy a planet by the time we're done. <laughs> but completely incapable of defending itself. It'll need a fleet. <laughs> Not if it goes fast enough. It goes too fast and hits too hard. No, the Can't problem is it's not going to be able to go that fast because the, the the size of the Mac cannon is going to compromise the structural integrity of the ship. Mauricio Delgado just kind of gives up a spot there to Rene Armour. What's up with that? Possibly a technical problem. Anthony Willis still in the lead. And there's the curse. <laughs> Spins it around. Will rejoin behind uh, Enrique Hervas. No, no, no. He's still ahead of Armour and Delgado and Butler. 
Nazi Ricky Wavos. Martin Evans to the lead. So what fights are you looking forward to tomorrow there, Brian? Uh, well, obviously the main event, which I know you're going to hate. I don't hate it. You, the bro, Max, they weigh more oh, than hang 100. On, hang on, hang on. Max Simmons going for Ooh. the move on Martin Edmonds. Here we go. If anybody the Castro car hang. Oh, Tobias is coming for it. <laughs> Three-way dance. Three-way dance. Mm -hmm. Into the carousel, which we saw Martin mess up before. And he sprints away. Got it right this time. The horse tornado. Sir, that's a carousel? I know what I said. I, I'm, I will say that I'm more looking forward to Whitaker. Oh, no. Anybody doesn't know, Mike has some weird projectionist body dysmorphia hatred thing going on. And There's nothing to do with body, body, body dysmorphia. 98 pounds, <laughs> raging, seething hatred. He'll call you unskilled and all kinds of stuff. Who doesn't weigh more than 98 pounds? <laughs> I mean, basically Sonya and everybody else. No, Sonya weighs over 100. She weighs like 98.2 pounds. She, she weighs in routinely at 105 and has to cut weight. With rocks in her pocket. Uh, Why does she I'm, cut I'm weight? I'm looking forward to the beginning of it. Uh, yeah, I like to see uh, Robert Whitaker fight, but he is just not what he was, and I don't know why. Um, yeah, I think I think a combination of age and obviously there's there's that there is that awakening when you get knocked out for yeah. the first time in a long time, where it's like, oh shit. It can happen. Yeah, and I mean, he's fighting Marvin Vittori, who I also kind of enjoy because he's just crazy. He's angry all the time. Yeah. Well, that doesn't seem to be all the time. Look it up! Specifically around fight time. Gets the move done. Very nice. I have a theory that Marvin Vittori is just... hates cutting weight. And it makes him so angry. Could be. Uh, and also, John the Bull McDessie's fucking fighting. Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. It's gonna yeah, be some for, spinning shit. Look forward to that one. Boy, Nasdaq Hacker, Hacker Splat is gonna get spin kicked in the head. Maybe. Possibly. I think Hawk Barast, unfortunately, is probably gonna win that, but it would not surprise me if that's the case. Mostly because Hawk Barast does not look good in his last two fights. Kind of. <laughs> Kind of just got Bobby Green to buy Bobby Green and uh, oh, down the inside for Max Simmons. Uh, did the switch back work? No. Maybe. Simmons has got it. So Max Simmons, after getting kind of just outpaced down the stretch in race one, looks like he's got he's got fight here and he's looking for the double he's looking for the double header here, the double win. Maybe is that his former race leader Anthony Willis with a nice save. Lost a couple of cars, by the way, uh, across here. We've lost uh, David Bailey and uh, Captain Bash. So Anthony Willis spins it around and rejoins. Has lost a spot there to Rene Irma. I'm also looking forward to the Benoit Zendani fight because he's a uh, seems like a fun dude. Eh, not really looking forward to it because of the opponent. Why? Just because the guy's a heavyweight? God, Mike, come on. They're lightweights. I know, I'm just kidding. I don't know anything That's about it. his opponent. I, I just think his, his his opponent is relying on, like, aggressive grappling. And that just feels yeah. like... Uh, that just feels like did he will, you know, yeah. win. <laughs> oh, Lord! Anthony Hello, Willis! Surely. Anthony Willis is upside down! The man is a human flapjack. Oh, he reset the car. Okay. That's not legal. <laughs> That's not what happens in real life. All right, Simmons versus Theorof. I'm surprised we haven't been with this like this whole time because they've been, they have been duking it out with Martin Edmonds with a front row seat in the background there. This this race has been much more interesting than the first one, so. which usually is the case with the uh, with the reverse grid because obviously 
force people. Instead of having, surprise, surprise, the fastest guys in front running away, you actually have to fight your way through the field. And uh, it leads to actual battles. Oh, Sausage and Eggers fucking fighting. Didn't she just fight? Yes, but it was really, really short and she just got on board. Yeah, alright. Uh, they, okay. they, they needed to... Also, she's not cutting full weight because it's a weight class. Oh, alright, yeah, well, that'll work. She's a late replacement on that one. Alright, yeah, I got you here. It's, uh... Zara Fane Dos Santos was supposed to fight. Uh, and then got pulled for unknown reasons. Probably legal. Those dirty Brazilians. Uh, she's not Brazilian. Dos Santos is Brazilian. Yeah, but she's she's French. Oh. She just had, you know, she has a Portuguese last name. Oh. She's just I suppose that's a lot. French heritage. Oh yeah, I'm looking at her profile now. She is from the Paris. She probably got deported because they <laughs> thought she was Brazilian. Maybe. Is there are two saints. Instead, we get Egger versus Perez, and Egger's probably gonna win that because, as Maybe. much as like Egger, kind of sucks in the sense that like she only wants to do one thing, it Perez will entirely allow her to do that one thing. <laughs> Egger is kind of the uh, the European equivalent of Ronda Rousey, where it's like I got arm bars. <laughs> We got arm bars, we got headlocks, DDT you into the ground. Mm -hmm. Stand up is so bad. Wow, I'm just gonna say that out loud. Yes. I said it on a podcast that is listened to that is listened to by like fifty people. Fifty? That seems yeah. pretty low. Maybe we can get some uh, get some subscribers. Indeed, that'd be nice. Anybody watching this? should go uh, listen to the Mio on Your Mama podcast. On MMA podcast. Oh, sorry. You got, the, you got the on broads thing and then the on your mama thing. and <laughs> I just, I get confused. Check it out on Spotify, Acast, and Anchor. Check and YouTube. Bizarre. Still get most of my views on YouTube. It is because... But Spotify... But Spotify is game, quite quickly. Nobody uses Spotify anymore. Everybody just buys vinyl records. No, it's more no one uses Acast. <laughs> that is true. I think I have one viewer on Acast. And whoever that viewer is, I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, so technically the term would be listener. Just the dulcet and, sounds of my voice. An audio viewer. Tobias Thierolf has fallen off the back of Max Simmons a little bit, although only due about the tune of one sec. So that is not over with. It's never over. Enrique Hervas, not really sure why. He's kind of on his own in fifth place. But that might develop into something. Actually, the low-key exciting fight might be uh, Gomez versus uh, Aaron's on the card because uh, Gomez fights in a way that he's completely disregarding his opponent's skills. Like it's, it's, it's you are not as good as me, therefore I don't have to defend. <laughs> and uh, that'll work and for quite a while until it does. Aaron's is Aaron's has got a little bit of power, a little bit of spinny shit, and a little bit of counter uh, ideas. So that might that might turn out to be really interesting. It's an absolutely fantastic strategy right up until it doesn't work. I mean, and he's a good enough athlete that it hasn't it hasn't, bit, it hasn't bit it hasn't bitten him much. Like he is a legitimate top end athlete. That's the only reason it works. But uh, but uh, I, I believe my podcast breakdown was like Gomez is going to win this fight, but I'm also not going to be surprised if this is the moment where his disregard for his opponent ends up with him dead as Martin Evans spins the background. You spin me right round, Martin, right round, like an open wheel thingy. I don't have anything to rhyme here. Still running in third place, though. Oh, so. he's driving. He's God, okay. Get it right. If he was running, he'd be last. The running order, sir. 
We're driving, we're not running. We've been over this. But they still use running order, even in the Oh, you should get, get with it. It's not, not 1904 anymore. Get with the terminology. <laughs> you get with the terminology. I am with the terminology. <laughs> I was born after the invention of the combustion engine. Somebody maybe might want to adjust to modern life. I know that you were frozen in an iceberg for 42. Mike, you, people don't know this. Mike is actually the inspiration for Encino Man. <laughs> Anthony Willis in the pit lane. It was something about wheeze and nugs and grindage. No Mr. Stoney, no wheeze the juice. I still don't know why Imavov versus Buckley's on the undercard. That, that, that to me makes no sense. Buckley is garbage. Buckley is awesome. No. Like he's, he's, he's awesome in a way that he's never going to be champion, but he is Correct. awesome. <laughs> that, is, that is fair. I can understand that. He's also awesome when you do that. Um, that's just more like a pet theory of mine. That is fair, but I support it. It's like one of those things where, like, none of these gyms seem to want you. This suggests that things are not, that you are a bit of a dick. And James Krause seems to have a real problem with him. And, uh, I mean, James Krause himself is a bit of a D-bag, but uh, I don't know. So I don't know. I, there's definitely something about Buckley that people who have met him unappealing. That is fair. Also, I'm very enjoying the fact that uh, these cars are controlled by Xbox controllers. Apparently. Uh, entirely incorrect. <laughs> there is a certain similarity between video game controllers and open wheel steering wheels. <laughs> this device, they once again closing on Max Simmons, and we'll see if he can get by. It seems to have been a, re a recurring theme in this round is Simmons getting out to a lead and then Thirol being like, all right, I'm going to wheel you in here a little bit. <laughs> Looks like Willis might be done. Or he's been in, he's been in the pits for a really long time. Um, take a pick, I guess. <laughs> either really long repairs or he has exited the race in this matter. Okay, here we go. On board with Simmons. I think he got him. I think Thierold got him. Yep. Right the butt. He kind of, he kind of played a little bit of a game of chicken there. Ayrton Senna, Alain Prost style. It's like just going down the inside being like, you can give me this spot or or we can hit each other. And, and Simmons just gets him right back. Uh, what you doing here, Toby? Is this a case of, like, um, playing with your food? <laughs> Get him, Toe Bender. Anthony Willis does rejoin the race, so, uh, and he's broken again. That's not good. Long time in the pits, only to come out without a nose cone or to break the nose cone off again. So, rough times for the man who at one point was leading, and he's back in the pit lane. Spin there for Vic V. Oh, Lord, that is a bad spot. That is a very bad spot, actually, to uh, spin, because that kind of beaches yourself. And uh, I think Anthony Willis has tricked the game into giving him the lead by taking a shortcut back to the pit lane. Because <laughs> it has him in the lead, and I... <laughs> he's, he's not. He's not in the lead. We'll just put it that way. He could be. If uh, mysterious circumstances were to rear their ugly head, I think this is a case where the uh, the the OBS uh, overlay is, uh, is confused. I know why. Your Rolf goes back past him through the carousel. It's weird because Theorol feels like he can just blow Simmons out of the water, and then he's he's given that spot back a couple of times. I. I have to think that this is a, um, in the spirit of Mike Stopmill, kind of playing with his food. Wow. You're just saying that to, to say that. I think I'm right. <laughs> You're probably not wrong. He can confirm or deny in the, uh, in the, uh, in the comments below if he wishes, but uh, I kind of think he's just playing with his food. <laughs>
Also, the fact that Simmons has the fastest lap at 6.03 uh, flat, when we know um, when we know Theorolf can run a six-minute flat uh, around here, suggests that that is the case as well. So Theorolf leads from Simmons, Edmonds, Hervas, Ermer, Vega, Butler, Delgado, and Willis. Willis is now back in the back after uh, the oddity of his uh, going around to the pits now. The space oddity? Space oddity. Space oddity. Ground control to Major Tobias. Sponsor says there on his nose. I've been trying to figure that out with this, with the uh, the all black car. Uh, that would be Kleenex. Uh, probably not. Come on, that'd be perfect. Where's Kleenex? God damn it! I mean, they don't need to advertise anything. That's that's that more the. I, I believe you've hit the nail on the head. They don't need. They don't need to advertise. <laughs> I understand, but it would be funny. Give them fifty bucks. Put the thing on their nose. Funniest sponsor I think I've seen still is uh, Dale Coin Racing running the uh, the Sunny's Barbecue sponsorship. <laughs> I believe. Uh, I mean, the obvious answer is uh, Talladega Nights when they put the fucking Cougar across the, the windshield. Uh, that's true. That's true. Well, yeah, but that, that 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 was that was a that was a historical documentary in Texas. Correct. Liberty, liberties. The uh, with the uh, story of him. Which reminds me, I have downloaded Days of Thunder. I plan on watching it sometime in the future. Tom Cruise. Sir, I believe that's Michael Rooker you're talking about? I mean, he is also in the film. What do you mean, also? It is definitely starring Tom Cruise. Sir. Also featuring Tom Cruise. Randy Quaid. No! Mauricio! Mauricio Delgado in the wall and losing a nose cone. Mauricio went chorizo deep on that one. Max Simmons has fallen to two seconds back of uh, Simmons. Yeah, he's closing again, though. I wonder if this is a uh, theoretical being like, all right, time to have another fight. <laughs> time to give the commentator something to talk about. <laughs> Hell yeah. Although there is, a, there is actually a good fight going on between Rene Irma and Enrique Irbas in fourth place that we unfortunately really not gotten anything to look at on. But they're within two seconds of each other. I will say Simmons does seem to gang on him through straight away, so it'll, it'll, it could be also a case of just Max being set up for maximum straight line speed as he overtakes. Oh! Thirolf has no nose! Uh oh Thirolf has no nose! The king well, that, the Emperor that has might, no clothes. That might explain that might explain the problems. The Emperor has no nose. And here is the battle I was talking about before. That is Hervas leading Ermer. They're having a good little scrap over there. Like this. I mean, the dumbest sponsorship I think I've ever seen in racing probably was uh, the year the Honda. Oh, Hervas makes a mistake. Ermer goes right through. Uh, was when Honda decided to make their Earth car, where literally they had no sponsors on the car. It was just like the Earth. It was like Deep. save the plant, save the planet sponsorship. Well, we burned shitloads of fossil fuels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And rubber. I mean, admittedly, it should be said that Formula One racing is a test bed for the development of 
and things, and actually recently has become a, a, a big part of like the, the development of um, uh, hybrid cars. Oh yeah. It's been in F1. I, uh... all, the, all, all the cars in F1 right now are hybrid engines. Oh, nice. And also are working on the idea of a lot of like energy recovery systems, like for braking and so on. Oh yeah. So, like, they're testing out a lot of things that, in theory, will reduce carbon emissions. Very nice. Uh, I know that uh, I saw a little uh, headline randomly uh, the other day that said that there was some sort of new big breakthrough in battery technology. So mm-hmm. it'd be interesting, specifically for uh, electronic vehicles. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, Ooh. Formula E has been driving a lot of the ideas there. With the uh, when they started Formula E, the battery could not actually make the race distance. So they literally, when you came in for the pits, you didn't you didn't change tires, you didn't refuel the car. You got out of the car and got into another car <laughs> and completed the race that way. Uh, and now they actually can uh, they can make it to the end on, on one matter. So r- racing does very much drive the uh, the innovation of the automotive industry. So. It's the ult- ultimate test bed. The Rolf is in the pit lane. So he's going to try and fix up the nose cone. That promotes Martin Edmonds up into second place. And will it promote Rene Ermer and Enrique Herbos? We'll find out. We're looking at them right now as they approach the uh, the um, arena section. And there is the Monster Energy car of Mauricio Delgado running in eighth place. Herbos is... Yep, they're both going to overtake Theorolf. And so will Vic Vega. Don't think Butler will. He's Why got not? Three, he's got three kilometers to go and four point two. Only kilometers. one arm. Yeah. Think Theorolf will make it out before them. And Simmons is or Whoa. Willis is back in the pit lane for a third time. Three uh, kilometers Man- and one arm. The James Butler story. <laughs> yes. Oh, he's saved there by Irma. So suddenly this battle between Ermer and Hervas is for a podium. Let's see what they can do. Does he have the apple bottom jeans and the boots we prefer? No. Maybe well. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think Hervas is off track somewhere because that gap is growing a fair bit. The apple bottom jeans in the boots with the Führer. No, wait. That ain't right. <laughs> Martin Edmonds running in second place, although a distant second. 1.4 kilometers behind Maxim's. You know it's distant distant when they're actually measuring the, uh, the gap in distance as opposed to seconds. <laughs> That's always a, a bit of a sign. Race is getting spaced out once again, although race two, once again, a fair bit more interesting. We're on the last lap here. We could definitely see some changes like Ermer, Hervas, and Vega are still somewhat close to each other, but it feels like everybody else is kind of in the spot they're going to finish as Mauricio Delgado hits the thing. with the one-armed man today, James Butler. The one-armed bandit is going to steal seventh place from those poor orphans from Africa. The movie. Anthony Willis rejoins with a nose cone attached to the car. Max Simmons, in the meantime, has got a half lap to go to victory. in second place. Would this be his best result of the series? It would be. It would be. He's been on the podium twice, but it was both times in third place. Herbos 
Pass and forth. As, uh, climbed back to a four second lead over Vega. But has dropped back to seven seconds off the podium. In fifth place, having a good race. Boo! Oh, uh, yay! Sorry, I mixed up my. Uh... Fix just had a really inconsistent form in this series. Like, I mean, guy, he's been a race winner. He's the ball there. He's also, he's also been a guy who struggled to be in the top ten. Like, it's, it's, it's a bit weird. And it's big spin. Whoa, oh, big spin! And he might get overtaken here. Especially if he keeps spinning wow, around, yeah, and there goes to, 300 points. There goes Tobias Dirolf, yeah, but the uh, the 300 points, it don't matter. You got to keep its position. Good rail grunt. 50-50 rail grunt. I think that's 350 points. Everybody who's anybody who's any been anywhere near a Tony Hawk game knows that. Yes, love the Tony Hawk games. BRB going to go listen to Tony Hawk 2 soundtrack. Holy shit. Second best soundtrack that's ever been. My favorite skater in the Tony Hawk, uh, the early games, was Jamie Thomas because he would just absolutely just, he would absolutely just run into shit and be fine. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> it's got to be Rune Glifford, nonstop Christ Air. Rune Glifford was up there, yeah. He, he, his unique trick, the, the Christ Air, was always very good. It was awesome. Pull that over every gap, just like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, no, uh, you know, like a 360 Christ Air or a double flipping 360 Christ Air. Like, what the hell are you doing? Mm -hmm. Yep. Green Glipberg, part of the uh, part of the third most uh, successful uh, doubles team in uh, X Games history. Right behind Tony Hawk and uh, can't, Andy McDonald? Andy Mack, yeah. There you go. They, they had to be the most Team successful. Team Boom. Yeah, they were. Because they were the uh, two best fucking skaters in the world. Second second best was Team Killer Bees, which was Bob Burnquist and Bucky Lassick. Oh, very nice. Simmons, your winner. Martin Edmonds and Renee Armour will join him on the podium. And then the third most the third uh, most accomplished was Rune uh, and, uh, uh, Mike Bloom. Or Mike Bloom. I, I can't even remember his name now. You don't even know. I will look it up. I don't believe you. I don't think you're really going to do it. Medals at. Here we are. X Game Medals Invert Doubles. Inverted Doubles. Vert doubles. Vert doubles. It was. I'm right. There you go. Well done. Uh. RIP that there's race. Our, there's our results. Max Simmons is your winner, followed by everybody. Championship results. Uh, Tobias Thierold does win the championship by five points over Max Simmons. So it was alive, but his second and fifth place today were enough to get the job done. Max, with his double win, does move into second place on 188 points 156 for Martin Edmonds and 150 for Enrique Hervas. Uh, Vic Vega, Rene Ermer, Mauricio Delgado, James Butler, uh, Taka Mariuka, and Henrik Andreasen rounding off your top 10. It's a shame Henrik could only make the one round because, you know, he did double podium the one round he attended. So one would think he would have been a would have been a threat, would have been a guy who who understood the circuit enough to uh, take the fight to the Tobias Theroles and Max Simmons of the world. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, congratulations to Rene Armour, who had the highest podium rate 
of all the drivers. Finished on the podium four times, finished five races. So that's an 80% conversion rate. Very nice. The nicest. Uh, champion Tobias Theorols was only 75%. So there you go. And that is the series. And uh, me and Byron are going to move on to the 3D speed commentary. So you'll probably be able to see that. Another in dimension. The, the another next dimension. section. And uh, Byron, do you have any final thoughts as we leave the Nord Schleife behind? Uh, the best possible night of D&D involves two chicks and a pair of dice. Oh.